Welcome back. We continue with our BVI chart briefing. If you missed part one of this briefing, I strongly suggest you go to the link in the comments section below or to our YouTube channel and watch it. Part one is full of useful information and this theme will continue into parts two and three this week and next week. All of us here at Proteus want your sailing holiday to be the best possible, so we're giving you all kinds of great info to help you plan your Caribbean getaway. Let's break it down and continue on our journey through the beautiful BVI. The next morning when you wake up in Great Harbour and Peter Island, we are going to suggest a day of some good activity. So we want you to head out and head over to Lee Bay. Uh, there are no real options for an overnight anchorage at Salt Island. However, the duo of Salt and Cooper Islands, and here's Cooper Island right here, um, is a snorkeling and diving paradise and well worth the diversion. We suggest the day anchorage of Lee Bay on the western end of the island, so right in here. And it's conveniently close to the wreck of the Royal Mail steamer, the RMS Rhone. So if you look here, this is sort of where the stern of the Rhone is. Okay. Uh, the good news is that the stern is in between 25 and 90 feet of water and makes snorkeling a viable option if you're not a scuba certified. The other good news is that the National Parks Trust has installed mooring balls, so access is quite easy. However, if the balls are full, we suggest you motor around to the northern point and anchor in Salt Island Bay, right in here. Okay. And dinghy back around to the mooring balls and then tie up to the dinghy balls here. The Rhone is an incredible snorkeling and diving experience, and I truly recommend that you, you make sure that this is on your, your list of to-do things. After this, which is you know, basically going to be a, a 90 minute stop at best, we suggest that you come around and into Cooper Island. Uh, Manchinil Bay is the primary anchorage here and it has about 40 mooring balls operated by two different companies. This is a busy anchorage as the, the North Road Town and Maya Cove, um, both on the southern shore here of Tortola. So here we go. So if you look here, we've got Maya Cove right here and we've got Road Town right here. These are generally um, where the charters will start and finish for the, for the larger charter companies. So this can be busy. Um, we suggest caution when you're entering it um, as it's not uncommon for two or more boats uh, heading at full steam towards the last mooring ball. So let's go back over here. So here's Manchineel Bay, and there are 40 mooring balls in here. And again, people tend to come in at high speed. Oftentimes there are swimmers in the water and this in this anchorage, so we do urge common sense. Anchoring is possible, but you might not anchor in the seagrass. You mustn't anchor in the seagrass as it's protected. It's a sort of a nesting area for turtles and for fish. It's protected by the National Parks Trust and it's a very, very important refuge. So don't abuse that, please. Um, ashore is the Cooper Island Beach Club, uh, home of my favorite, the conch fritters. The conch fritters there are amazing. There is also the now famous rum bar. Uh, you can get samples of rum from all over the Caribbean, and they've recently opened a microbrewery. So the restaurant serves great food, and the atmosphere is always very, very convivial. I, it, Cooper Island was always my favorite when I lived in the, in the BVI. You can also visit Sail Caribbean Divers for all of your diving needs, as well as outfit yourself from the well-stocked boutique that they have there with a, a brand new sarong or a cheeky t-shirt. Uh, while you're in Manchinil Bay, take your dinghy around to System Point, which is right here, and there is great snorkeling there. Uh, the dinghy moorings are there, so enjoy it. And it's a very, very low-key way of spending the day and the evening. The next morning, now your head might be a little bit thick, but we have just the thing to cure that. Um, we want you to head up to the baths. The baths are here. Uh, the baths are a mandatory experience while you're in the BVI. This area is also part of the National Trust Park system and therefore must only use the mooring balls that they provide. No anchoring here at all. Again, caution is important when you approach this and uh, this mooring field for both the yacht and the dinghy because there might be swimmers in the water. So even when you're getting into the dinghy to go into the baths, you must use caution. There are always people in the water. Patience is often necessary when you go to the baths in season, uh, especially during the middle of the day. We suggest that you visit either early or later in the day. The baths are every bit as awe-inspiring as the pictures suggest. It's, it's another one of those places that's incredibly special. 
We do suggest that you use a pair of water shoes, not flip-flops, so as you clamber through the impressive rock formation and go up and down the steps and ladders, you've got sure footing and you won't slip. This is absolutely, without a word of hyperbole, a cathedral of stone. Uh, nobody really knows how this formation came to be, but there are some theories suggest that it was a volcanic eruption. Um, once you've walked through the pools and the chambers of the bath, take the path to the restaurant called the Top of the Baths for a cool drink, breakfast or lunch, and best of all, a fresh water swimming pool, which the customers of the restaurant can use. You'll need it after the climb. It's just absolutely stunning here. When you get off the boat, uh, you'll dinghy into the dinghy mooring balls, which are still in quite deep water and you'll have to swim ashore. But honestly, this is just an incredible, incredible experience. And if you've got a waterproof camera, that's another great thing to take with you. Next, after this, because this is only a day stop and you'll only be here a few hours, we're going to go up and into the North Sound. Not quite sure what happened there, but basically the North Sound. When approaching the North Sound, you'll encounter Colquhoun Reef. So let me just bring this in here. Colquhoun Reef jealously guards the entrance, and so does Cactus Reef on this side here. Um, we recommend you approach from the north, looking for Mosquito Rock that marks the northernmost point of Colquhoun Reef, which is right here. And as you can see, when I drew the line, I came right out so that I could see the channel markers. The entrance is well marked, and as long as you cut no corners and stay within the channel markers, you'll have no issues, and the sound will open up as you enter. And open up it does. Once inside the reef and in clear water, you'll have a few choices. Um, we could go with the classic of Sabre Rock or the Bitter End Yacht Club, which is what I've shown here. Uh, the Bitter End Yacht Club is, uh, it's global. I mean, I was in Thailand uh, a few months ago, and I saw the Bitter End bumper sticker on the back of, of a pickup truck. I've been in Australia and seen it. I've been in the USA, all over the USA and seen it. And not long ago, I was in London and saw one. So this is a, just a world famous place. Uh, the Bitter End Yacht Club has all kinds of stuff. There's a supermarket, there's uh, great restaurants, mooring balls, dock space, beach bars, uh, trash facilities, fuel, water, ice. Uh, it's just it's a full service place and, and we highly recommend it. Across from it, just north of it, is Sabre Rock, which is right here. Uh, Sabre Rock did sustain a lot of damage in Hurricane Irma, but they are rebuilding. When you take one of Sabre Rock's mooring balls, you also get up to 250 gallons of water for free, which as you all know in the BVI, is that's a wonderful thing. And BVI Gold, which of course is ice. They also give you a free bag of ice. It's one of the best deals in the BVI. The marina also has slips with power and although you're not allowed to bring garbage ashore, there is a launch that will come around the anchorage and will take your trash for about three dollars a bag. The restaurant and bar are great and considering the location, pretty good value. But the thing that is so much fun, especially if you have kids aboard, is every day at happy hour they feed the tarpons, uh, which is a must-see. The kids will love it. They, they hold fish skins over the side of the dock and the tarpons jump up and take them away. But there's also a first-class resort here for those who'd like a little land time. In the extended versions, we'll take you through all of the other options in the North Sound. Uh, next, we're going to head for Anagata. Well, you've woken up in the North Sound and you've made the decision to make the trip up to Anagata. For many years, charter companies didn't allow their guests to go to Anagata because it was so low and the water and reefs surrounding it made it very challenging to see. And this was rectified when they really marked the channel well. Before you attempt the passage to Anagata, make sure that you start early in the day so that the sun is behind you as you enter the anchorage. It's very, very important. So they rectified it, they laid the channel markers, and this guides boats into the anchorage near the main settlement. Anagata is quite flat and it contrasts the, the majestic volcanic vistas that the rest of the BVI projects. The island is made predominantly of coral and limestone and there's no point on it higher than 30 feet. And when you look back at the BVI with its high peaks of 1600 feet, 1200 feet, it really is a complete contrast. The beach here is stunning and the island is very, very sparsely populated. However, this is an incredibly special place. It's referred to often as the drowned island. Uh, Anagata is challenging to see when you approach it, so we suggest you follow the cruising guide aboard your boat for the correct approach angles and course headings. I've used two different ones and they've never steered me wrong. Once in the anchorage, which is in here, so you've got to make sure you follow in the 
uh, follow in the channel markers and you make the steep left and you come in here. Once in the anchors, you have a choice of picking up a, a mooring ball or anchoring. If you pick up a mooring, the owner will soon be out in their dinghy to collect the fee, so don't worry too much about finding where to pay. You'll also find that you'll be visited by envoys from the local restaurants when asked about and being asked about dinner reservations. Take it from me, if you only eat lobster once while you're in the BVI, this is the island on which to do it. It's amazing. You'll be spoiled for choice dining ashore, for dining and imbibing, because you know, you are in the BVI and it is the law. And there are now no fewer than 12 eating establishments on the island. There's a small grocery store there. Anagata also offers a few car and scooter rental companies and taxis to help you get around to the all important northern side of the island where the beauty continues and, in my opinion, multiplies. You can even go on a fishing tour for the tarpon, if you like. And for the ornithologists, we suggest a trip to the salt ponds in the interior where you will see the famous flamingos. If you're lucky on your trip, you'll also see the endangered rock iguanas of Anagata, as well as a sanctuary for them, where the adolescent iguanas are looked after until they reach maturity and are ready to be released into the wild. The snorkeling at Loblolly Bay, which is over here, if you take a taxi or rent a scooter or rent a car, is uh, it's amazing. It's one of those natural places that's just truly beautiful. And then if you come along the North Shore to Cowrec Bay, uh, I, I particularly love Cowrec Bay, there's a rather primitive bar there. The bar is often run on the honor system. So make sure you've got cash on hand as credit card acceptance is the exception and not the rule. But um, this is one of my favorite places in the whole world. So afterwards, you'll come in here. Sometimes people spend two nights in, in Anagata because it just is one of those magical places, and that's entirely up to you. In this episode of the BVI Chart Briefing, we've gone from Salt Island all the way to the sunken island of Anagata. Thanks for watching, and if you like it, please give us a thumbs up, leave any comments you have below, and please don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. See you next Thursday when we look at Jos van Dijk, Kane Garden Bay, and Soper's Hole.